that are looking to sell their homes, right? So tier one, you find the buyer. There's no other agent involved. We write up the contract. We walk it through escrow for you. Our commission is just 1%. So what I tell them there is, Mr. Seller, put it on, on Zillow and Redfin. I'll hook you up with my uh, photograph guy and I'll hook you up and make sure that you got a good stager so you can get some good pictures before we put it on Zillow and Redfin. And you just pay for that. You know, you pay for the staging and you pay for the pictures. I'm just going to charge you 1% and I'm going to get you hooked up. That's tier one. Now, I have a client that I'm doing this with right now as we speak. She didn't want to do tier two or tier three. And she wanted me to reduce my price another half a point on both of those tiers. I've used, she's been a client of mine for 15 years and given me so many referrals that I quickly said, yes, I don't worry about a half a point. Some people will fight for that. So tier two, I just find the buyer. We do an open house, whatever. I find them off Zillow or Redfin. I'm going to charge 4% and I'm going to walk it through escrow. Okay. Tier three, if there's another realtor involved, never, and I repeat, never offer 2% commission to the selling office. I think that is the worst thing you can do because today you're seeing 4%. Win a trip to Hawaii if you close escrow, if you get the deal into escrow before August 31st. One, one and a quarter percent bonus commission to the selling realtor. You're seeing all that stuff again. So anybody who offers 2% to the selling office commission, you are asking for trouble because there are realtors out there that will not show your listing because you're only offering a 2% commission. Who can agree with me on that one? I know they're out there. You have them in your office and you know that there are realtors out there that will not show a 2% selling office commission. So this 4.5% could easily go to 5% on tier three because 2.5%, you may need to throw a trip into Hawaii for them as well. Or, I mean, you got to, give them incentive, these realtors right now. You've got to. And you got to explain tier three, may, that may go up to four and a half, five and a half percent. And you got, and you got to have your seller be okay with that. And then if it's a $1.5 million listing, 1% higher, we're talking another $15,000. <laughs> then tier four is when I go, take them around and I show them all the properties in the neighborhood. And after I'm done showing them all the properties in the neighborhood, guess what? They need to fix up their house. So that's tier four. And that's my 50, 50 profit participation program. And I don't get into it there, but that's what, I, these are things that I talk about with the homeowners. After I go show them all the homes that are available for sale in their neighborhood. And I tell them, hey, here's what we need to do in order to sell your home for top dollar. Do you agree with me? If you agree, then let's talk about tier four. Okay, this is what I do. So tier one is what the answer is to Lori's question. You want Redfin and you want Zillow. And you want the seller to put the listing up. And just warn them that they are going to get pounded by realtors asking them for the listing. It is on those sites, she's saying. Great. Just and it's still not getting action. My answer to that was, then the price is still not right. That's no. the only thing I can imagine if it's on those sites. My answer to that is go look at the listings that are available for sale in the neighborhood and take the seller with you and ask the seller, what place did your house come in after you look at all the listings? 
That's the answer. Because this house I, is gorgeous. I will put that on my tombstone when I die. Um, Don Bet says, in tier four, uh, how do you set the base price from which the shared ah. profit is calculated? I love that question. That is the question that I ask the seller of the home when we're done looking at the properties. In the, for the homes that we saw today, I asked them one simple question. What place did you come in? And if the house was listed for sale today in the condition that it's in, what do you think it's worth? And then we agree on the, a price. Then I go to work. That's exactly how we do it. Uh, I agree. Uh, Lori says, question, best way to do an open house in a gated community, sign out in front of the gate. I know what my answer is. I'd like to hear everybody else's. I'll give mine. Um, if I was that gung-ho, and this is actually a great looking property. Um, we, we've been showing it. This thing's in great shape. It's on the newer side for San Diego. Here's how I would do it, but that's just me. Um, why wouldn't you, I hate, I'm about, the words are about to come out of my mouth that are about to set me up for a horrible Saturday, Fred. I, I would set me out in front of the property. And when people show up for the open house, I, I buzz them in to make sure that they can get into the house. If there's no other way to do it, you're not going to leave a post-it note. You're not going to leave it securely untagged. You're not going to leave a note on the lockbox. Then somebody's got to be out there to let them in. And that means, sadly, Fred, me, probably. Ah, love is special. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, the problem in Vegas is the prices are dropping so radically fast. Um, Vegas is going through, quote unquote, a housing recession. The other move that I think everybody misses, why aren't you listing the property? The two places that I think are still gold mines. I don't know why everybody's not using Craigslist still. And I don't know why people aren't using um, Facebook Marketplace. If you know what the monthly payment on this property at 689 is going to be, uh, at a 30-year conforming, what's about the payment right off the top of your head, Fred? 689? 689. Uh, let me just uh, just round it. I, I, you know, the rates have gone up so much, Lee, that I'm like scared to answer that question. But all right, uh, let's say five and a half. Let's just round it, round it. Uh, you know, let me. Uh, I can get an answer in 20 seconds. And so with 42 pictures, you guys can go on Facebook Marketplace, put all 42 pictures, figure out what the payment's going to be, right? Drop that payment on Facebook Marketplace and troll for buyers. It's how I've done it historically. It's a pretty easy way to go. Yeah, that's not a bad idea at all. I've used it before. It's how I generate buyers. And as when I came up with the idea and I did it the first time, uh, David Bartel said, well, that's busy work. Well, we don't, we didn't need buyers back then. We don't, right now we need buyers. You know, it's turned into this weird thing where we kind of need buyers in some of these niche markets. Uh, $3,3100 a month with 20% down at five and a quarter. Okay. So put a payment. Uh, so I would go on Facebook Marketplace, put this up at 3200 a month, uh, put the address, put the phone number. And yeah, some of them are going to be renters. Um, but if they can afford 3200 a month, my question would be, why aren't you finding out whether or not you can buy? I, I think it's a great opportunity. I've used it before for exactly that principle. And if anybody else has any other great ideas, I agree with Brendan. I agree with Lori. Target video, create video, create content, sell the property. Here's the problem. 689 is becoming special, right? Like higher end property in Vegas are becoming um, less desirable than affordable properties, than condos in Vegas. It, it's a thing. It's a thing right now. Uh, we're seeing price reductions. I'm seeing it with Stephen Thompson when I talk to him. Uh, it's definitely a thing out here, Fred. 
And we've yeah. also got the highest eviction rate right now. Yeah, they're they're chucking people left and right. Well, there, I don't know what the eviction rate is in Nevada, but and it's nationally it's thirteen point four percent for people who are behind and delinquent on their rent. California's fourteen point one because obviously it's expensive over here, and I think Nevada's leading the nation in. Um, and bankruptcy starts. So, you know, that's, you know, got to go through the bankruptcy court to get these people evicted. Which just is, to stall. Just to yep, stall. Uh, just, bankruptcies do not keep you from being thrown out of your house. So uh, that's that's all really interesting. It's, it's a good topic. Um, I want to take better photos. I don't like the photos that are on there at all. I don't know. They're not bad photos. I mean. Get it stayed. Always. They're not really bad photos. They shoot the rooms well. It comes across pretty clean. I don't know. I don't like the lighting on it. I don't know what it is about the lighting that bothers me so much, but I think they do a pretty good job. Nice pool. It's a great place. I just, and a big lot. It's got room for an ADU. Nice. It's a great little property. Huge garage. Gated community. It's not bad. It's not a bad property. I just higher end property in Vegas is not as desirable. I, it's just not as desirable right now. It's just not. People want affordable. Welcome to the recession. And this property might be a victim of the property recession. I think this is going to happen in a lot of markets. I don't think it's going to happen in Orange County, but certainly parts of Orange County that were getting unreal pricing are going to have to come down and be realistic. I mean, this is an insane great room. It's a great looking kitchen. Is the I, seller opposed to uh, getting the property staged? Yeah, that's a good question. I, you know, I always question they're not. So it's no. Um, I don't know how I feel about staging. Oh, I definitely do it. It definitely do it. No doubt. Inequivocally, I it is worth the money every time and then reshoot the photos. That would be my suggestion as well. T. Miller, how about an option? If they took an option, T. Miller, I'd probably get it for myself. It'd be a lovely place for me. That's what I need. I need about, you know, 5,000 square feet of just me and one person <laughs> <laughs> probably have to buy a bunch of dogs in this house uh they said they got to do what they got to do I, I staging is not bad i don't know i don't think the photos are that bad at all um i do agree with brendan and Lori on the shooting the video and doing content and doing a walkthrough i do agree with putting it on facebook marketplace i do think it should be on craigslist um, with the 3600 per month price tag, I think you have to look. There are virtual staging photos. Marvin, please send that email. Virtual staging emails. Uh, yeah, photos all over it. But that's like a dating website, and then they have pictures that make them look real good, and you meet them in person, and you're like, oh. Yeah, don't this I, the only I problem I have it. with these photos, they all seem to be very bleached out. I don't know if it's the gray walls or the color selection or the way they shot it with a filter. I mean, honestly, I could take the, probably to save all the trouble, I could probably take these and drop them on Fiverr and have somebody color correct them. Yeah, I'm with Brendan to be touched up. I think these photos are fine. I think I would take them on Fiverr and five, find somebody for five or 10 bucks to literally color them up and add some flavor to each of the rooms. But it's clearly a gray on white on gray affair, which is kind of depressing, but I don't think it shows bad, even from the photos. I mean, I get a good grip of what I'm getting by looking at it. I love the bathroom. Tub's too small for me, but um, great side yard. I mean, that's RV parking for God's sakes. Three car garage. For seven, Fred, for seven in a gated community with a pool and a hot tub. 
you know, drop some solar panels on this bad boy and it's a 24 seven. It's a nice place. Yeah, I think you could easily go on Fiverr and touch this up without having to overpay for a photographer. I, I think those are all great ideas. Two fulls, one half bath with three bath, four beds, 2,500 square feet. That's the problem. They overpriced this thing from the beginning. It's 73 days on the market. And as I've always said, if you're going to live in Vegas, live by the Mormons. And this is right next to it. Just so, thought I'd say it out loud for everybody. Another Perfect thing, spot. Another thing you can do is um, you can do have the seller do that buy down thing that I've been promoting on my listings and basically give them a $25,000 credit, drop the interest rate 1% lower and let the, uh, let the buyer know that the property is going to be sold at this interest rate, which is going to be approximately 1% high, lower than any other property that you might be looking at. What and would a half there, point cost, Fred? I mean, that's a really good question, right? So let's say the interest rate right now is five and a half conforming. What would it cost to drop a half percent and buy it down I would, to five? I would, I would go it down to four and a half. I'd go okay. down a full point and... And uh, the answer to that question is, let me get the answer. Hold on. I'm going to look it up right now. So uh, right now, we are at 5.375 for zero points. Wow, it's gone up to 5.75. Yeah. I'm still so in the running for my seven, Fred. Four, 4.625 would be basically two points. Yep. Two points on... On a five hundred thousand dollar, I don't know. I mean, it's six eighty nine. So if they put twenty percent down, that's one hundred and yeah. Uh, so it'd be about a six hundred thousand dollar loan, plus or minus one one thirty would be five sixty. <coughs> five sixty two points would be eleven thousand two hundred plus another five for closing cost. Basically, a sixteen thousand dollar credit would get you down to four point six two five. That's better than a price reduction. I, I would know. say, oh my gosh, that's actually a really, I'm with Brendan on this. This is a br brilliant idea, right? So if you can get the seller or the selling agent to agree to, look, we're willing to give up 16,000 to buy down the rate and take it down two full points. And, full and you'd point. have to use the word estimated 4.6 interest rate. Seller's willing to buy down the rate by 2%. Yeah. 1%. Yeah. Uh huh. Or 1%. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I'm kind of with Brendan on this. I think it's a great sales pitch. It, 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 it's what you should, if you're not, if you're a realtor and not offering that, because here's what it does. Here's what it does. And this is why I put these videos out on Facebook, because in order to get that same $600 a month lower payment, you would have to drop the price by approximately $100,000. And right. no seller is going to do that. So the other option is to buy down the rate, right? So by buying down the rate, you can get a $600, approximately $500 to $600 lower monthly payment by doing that, okay? Now, what it does for the real estate market is it you sell your home at full price. You get a credit for $16,000. So it helps stabilizes the market for other sellers in that neighborhood. And if you are a homeowner and you see other properties available for sale in your neighborhood, you, I know this is helping out your competition, but if your house is nicer than their house and you go to the other realtors and say, hey, instead of dropping your price, why don't you just offer a $16,000 credit towards the buyer's closing cost. That way you can still sell at a full price offer. And then that way you don't have a problem selling your whole house because everybody else is dropping their home by $50,000 because that's what's happening right now. Since March of, 2020, of 2022, home prices are down 20% in Vegas. Yep. So I think this is brilliant. I think this is the angle. I think you figure out the monthly payment at like 
uh, a discounted rate. I think you put it up on Facebook Marketplace. You go plumb all those people. Um, they're offering 5K as of yesterday. If they're going to offer another 11, then you're dropping the interest rate and lowering the payment on it. They're still getting a higher net yield on the whole thing without dropping it down by 100,000. I think it's a great idea. It's the new home buyer. It's the new seller trick. The new home seller trick. It's great. It's a great angle. I would blast that on Craigslist. I would blast that on Facebook. I would go back and re-upload it through the streams on everyone else with those updated figures. I'd leave it off the MLS. You're not the listing agent, right? You're plumbing for buyers, technically. Um, you're only getting a bonus if you sell it through helping the agent. So your goal is to find the buyer. If your goal is to find the buyer, I would be all over Facebook Marketplace. I would be all over Facebook Marketplace at that price tag. Uh, if you can find somebody who can pay 3000 to 3500 a month for that property, I, I would just put it at 3000 You'd be right in the ballpark, plus or minus. And then start going through those people. And if you can pay 3000 a month, then you can purchase this property. It's just a matter of finding the loan that works for them. That's the way I would do it. That's the way I've done it in the past. This wow. is buyer hunting. Yep. Buyers are way more valuable today than they were five months ago. Yep. And the one trick that I learned about buyer hunting was go on Facebook marketplace, go on Craigslist, show the property, Tell them what it'll cost per month. See who generates the call. If they're okay with three thousand to thirty-five hundred dollars a month, and they say yes, go. Okay, um, why aren't you buying it? Like you can own this property right now. Like this is your house, and that's the gimmick. And even if it winds up being somebody who can only rent at that price tag, fine. That is such an upper echelon in Vegas of someone who will pay $3,000 a month. Go find a lease online and make yourself an extra four or 500 bucks for putting them in a lease. It's still a client for life, Fred. You don't know when they're going to come back. Yeah. Uh, Avelia, I just listed a house that had been listed twice, removed quite a bit of furniture, added new art, and a lot of uh, editing to the layout. Made it look very different. Professional photography looks amazing. Marketing now to all past agents who have closed in the past three months, 900 plus agents in my office. We have two days from um, contacting agents and we have a few, I am interested, buyers at 3% to BA. $100,000 price drop. Had been on the MLS for 65 days, not yet in the MLS. 1.5. Again, I think there's a thing at 1.5 million, and I'm going to say this, and we're talking South San Diego, right? So we're talking the South Bay. There is something weird about each price tag. So up to about five, Carlsbad, all right, it's still 1.5 in Carlsbad. Um, I think there is something to be said about price ranges that everybody needs to accept. A good price is not a good price. That's kind of a realtor answer, Fred. Uh, I think up to about uh, what's, what is it? About five or $600,000 for California, Nevada, Arizona, Florida, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to see the most act activity in there. And anytime you get, a, it seems like above six, there's that next plateau between six and a million. And then there's that whole weird plateau between one and two. And then above two, it doesn't matter if it's 2 million or 15 million at that point, at least in my mind. Um, and feel free for anybody to correct me, but there seems to be plateaus of where buyers currently have activity. And the cutoff is right around six. I mean, anything above five or six, people are just not into it, Fred, in this market. Okay, so typically you are correct. Here's the problem today. So the conforming limit balance is $647,200. $647,200. That's the conforming limit for any property located in the United States of America. Any loan amount above $647,200, they go into what are considered to be jumbo rates. Now, 
there are some high cost areas that uh, allow you to go into what are called high balance conforming rates, but those are only in specific areas. And so if you're in certain areas that do, if right up above 647, 200, if you're in certain areas, you're now into jumbo land. Well, jumbo land is typically 1% higher than what you would get on conforming. Here's the deal today though. Jumbo land is still in the low fours. And jumbo loans are being done by the big banks. I have connections with some of these jumbo lenders and they have some amazing programs. Like for example, if you have a property that is selling above 647, 200, you can put the interest only payment out there on a 30 year fixed loan. And they have 30 year fixed loans with interest only options for the first 10 years. So the, you know, there a lot of people are doing these two one buy downs where you get a, a, a 2% lower rate in year one and then a 1% higher rate in year two. And then in year three, it's the note rate until the remainder of the term. That, that is very popular right now. Interest only is even better because there's no lower payment than an interest only payment, meaning there's no principal reduction. But talking about lower prices, rich people are okay with interest only. They don't care about reducing principal. They just want to cut their overhead. The ones that care about that stuff. So for the first 10 years, you can have a fixed rate for 30 years on a 30 year fixed loan, but the first 10 years you're paying interest only. They love it. It's smart. And the rate is in the 4% range right now on jumbo loans. That's how you do it. And that's what's going on today. There you go. If I was giving advice from a marketing standpoint to anybody that was looking for an immediate deal, I don't think there's anything wrong with you going through whatever your office has as listings, find anything over 60 days, make a partnership with that selling agent for a little bit of kickback on their side, get a chance at the buyer side. Um, I would definitely do Facebook marketplace at whatever the monthly payment would be. I would do Craigslist at whatever the monthly payment would be. I agree with Fred of working out, um, getting the seller and or the selling agent to agree to a buy down to lower the interest rate. I agree with Lori. I'm going to keep saying it because Lori brought it up before Brendan, um, shooting video and presenting the property. Um, yes, continually doing the group technique right here to the buyer seller groups of a concentrated area. This is a very unique area of Las Vegas. This isn't like all of Las Vegas. This isn't, you know, a block off the strip. This is, this is up in the shiny happy part. Okay. This is stuff by Fred's brother for God's sake. It's the nice area. Um, he's up in paradise Valley. Isn't he Fred? He's up at, he's up in that corner. Fred's isn't he? Brother? Yeah. He's over by bears a little bit, right? He's in uh, Magic Mountain. In the North, state. south, east. Yeah, he's southwest, right? Have I got it right? Sunrise Mountain uh, area. Yeah, no, same area. Sunrise Mountain. There you go. Your brother's where? Magic Mountain or Sunrise Mountain? Uh, Magic Mountain near L.A., Santa Clarita. Your brother and, who lives oh, in oh. Vegas? Oh, oh no, he's on the west side. He's on Fort Apache and yeah, so out by Sunrise Mountain. He's out in that yeah. same area. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, I'm gonna go be his neighbor. I'm gonna pick this deal up, Fred. I'm gonna be your brother's neighbor. We'll do barbecues. That's the way I'll get you over all the time. <laughs> it's the only area I'm looking at to buy long term. It's either that or I'm gonna go live up at up on Charleston. Um, you know, we've kind of had a couple good ideas, and this would be another good idea for you, Lee. Yeah, to help to help sellers 
and listing agents market their listings off of the MLS. Yeah. You know, and in all these different little things that you're talking about. And I think it's, an, and, you know, we talked about helping people stop the trustee sales. You know, that's another business opportunity. I mean, there's so many things that you can do to generate. But there are so many. I And that was the interesting three, thing when Lori presented it to me. She told me what she wanted to do. And in my head, I'm already on Facebook Marketplace. I'm already laying down what the price tags are. I didn't think the photos were that bad. I could see touching them up on Fiverr, right? And using some of these techniques to um, up, look, taking these photos and like Photoshopping them a little bit so that they're color coded or hiring someone to do it for 10 or 15 bucks, way better than reshooting this whole property. I mean, what real estate photographers want to shoot a property is in my humble opinion, egregious. There, I, some of them are worth it. But when you start getting into, I want to do 3D staging and I'm going to come through here so people can do virtual walkthroughs and all that, calm down, all right? It's still kind of a seller's market. Let's all take a deep breath here. We just need to find the right buyers for the particular property. And to do that, we've got to hunt in the right area. I'm kind of like Brendan right? Single property webpage. Um, so I'm going to give you my take on the single property webpage with a keyword search. So because I'm under the gun, Brendan, um, I agree with you. And Lori brought that up about doing a single page uh, website. I would probably rather do a business page on Facebook, which will get indexed quicker. Then I can attach that to Facebook Marketplace and I can also attach that to Craigslist and it will show up quicker um, SEO wise. Does that make sense? The problem with a single property page web page, I'm just making a display web page. I'm not going to have time for SEO to kick in. So I would rather have some kind of SEO kick in when somebody types in this address and land on Lori on a Facebook page that I've built. And that will happen in a quicker manner. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, Facebook indexes that much quicker. That's why I get paid the big bucks, Fred. Smart. I mean, I, I've never done that, so I wouldn't know. Um, no, I, I get, and Brendan Wright, I'm not trying for SEO, but I am, right? If Lori talks to somebody or this agent talks to somebody, or anybody talks to them about this property and they type that address in, I want them on Lori, not the listing agent, right? My bread and butter, look, I'm going to be completely selfish here, right? This is my bread and butter now, right? I want Lori to get that deal. That's money out of my pocket, right? So I want them to type in that address. And I'm telling you, Facebook is always line one. You cannot beat Facebook. It's really hard to beat Facebook when it comes to line one. Google keyword for address will cost me two cents per click. I agree. Um, Brendan, Facebook will cost me zero. I understand it's only two cents. Yeah, all right, we'll do both. I have a Google account, so I'll do both. All right, Brendan and Lori, let's all not argue about this. Well, my, no, point, it's, it's my point to it is, I want somebody to put in that address and I want Lori's face and Lori's phone number because I want her to get the buyer and I want her to get the kickback from the seller, right? Like that's my goal. You hire me as, look, this is no different than when people do red videos. What do you want? You want me to get your name out there and you want me to create a flow line for you. Like I get it. It's just going to take us doing it for months and months. It's a slow process. This is not a slow process. This is like a meat cleaver. You're asking me to come in before this sales agent gets a random offer before I do all this work and you invest all this money before this agent randomly gets an offer and closes this deal before you get a chance to sell it. Like I'm playing a shot clock, Fred, as a marketer. This is as hard as it gets for a marketer. Here's the shot clock. We've got a real estate agent who's already got the list. They could randomly get an offer at any point that the seller can accept and cut 
my client, in this case, my wife, Lori, out of the deal, right? That's what I'm playing with. You're asking me what's the most efficient way for me to get the buyer, possibly get more leads, and or get a little bit of the seller's deal because I've actually got it sold for them because they haven't done anything, but, you know, twiddled their thumbs for 75 days. That is hard, Fred. That's hard for a marketer. Look, I'm good. So what do, what do I have to do? Anytime somebody types in that address, I got to have Lori's face on it. Quickest way to do that, Facebook. Second quickest way, yeah, I can do a .io. I can do a .com. I can do a single splash page, have it up by the end of the day. Like I, I kind of know how my day is going on that topic. Secondly, why am I not on Craigslist? Why am I not on, um, why am I not on Facebook Marketplace advertising this property with those photos, $3,500 a month, right? Thirdly, why wouldn't I re-upload them through Open Door Backpage, right? With the seller willing to buy down that rate. We don't know if that's real, but I, I would imagine they might go for it. Um, 16,000 is compared to dropping at a hundred thousand. Fred seems to be a little more reasonable. Um, Brendan, if it's not her listing, make sure she has permission. She has permission. She has permission. Um, done. The thing is that for a single prop, the website you can have is a single writer with a QR code. So the drive go by right to you. Also, if it's a good sales pitch to a seller, when you're doing a listing presentation, I don't disagree with any of that but I've actually got a real listing agent and that's kind of the, the hair trigger and all this. Like the, as much as Lori tries to convince me that the listing agent is playing ball and they're new and they would never screw her sideways. Um, Fred, how many times have you been screwed by listing agents you knew that would never screw you sideways that screwed you sideways? Oh, um, uh, I can think of a couple times. <laughs> I mean, definitely a, a couple times. At least a couple. Let's all agree that we've all had a couple where, oh, no, I have a great agreement with the selling agent. And if I do this and I do that, we're all going to play ball and we're all going to make money and we're all going to be friends. Sure you are. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody on this call has felt that way about an agreement with another agent and been completely cut out of the deal. Um, now we're including me and my marketing into the mix. Uh, I will not have it. I, I will not market for somebody that I do not know that is not going to pay Lori money for it. So it's an all or nothing proposition with me. And my attitude is let's do everything, but I'm going to make sure that everything winds up going to Lori's phone call. I, I already know. I've already done my research. This agent doesn't have anything in place. There are no phone numbers in place. It's a pain in the ass to try to contact the selling agent. Reason has this property hasn't sold. She's not on this call. I'm going to say it. She's done a piss poor job of making herself available except through the MLS. She has used no other form of marketing. Cool. I'll step right in. I'll step right up and I will step right in and I will take care of that. And those are the things that I would do. Um, Make sure you answer your phone. That's number one. Yeah, that's well, now we're back to a Fredism. Answer your phone. Answer your phone. Yeah. And there you go for this week on uh, suggestions of finding stuff. We're going to take calls from people here that are on the call with us. And uh, tomorrow we will be doing market call. Don't forget to schedule your one-on-ones. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody for the market call tomorrow. As a bonus for all of you, we're going to reiterate this buy-down concept with Fred. And if you're a member of this group, which you should be, you will be getting this email later today from Fred. Take it away, Fred Solomon. Okay, so this is for realtors who are looking to get more listings, right? And how to market it. So two things. First thing, and we you know, do these calls and come up with these ideas, but this is actually a really good one. So if you go on Zillow and if you go on Redfin and you see any seller who is a for sale by owner, 
you need to call them up and offer them a marketing suggestion and say, hey, look, this is what I recommend for you to get your home sold. I can help you with this. Are you interested? Did we lose Fred? Somebody raised their hand that you only hear me and not Fred, but I suspect you hear me. We'll give him a second. I don't know what it is about Palm Springs. The there, hold on, Fred, you faded out. Palm Springs ate you up again. Oh, man. It happens. Okay. So, I like I like inserting my voiceover of the, hey, please buckle your seatbelt. We're going to have a little turbulence here. Uh, Coachella Valley is experiencing a little high winds at the moment, and I hate. <laughs> Fred will be right back with you. Oh, my God. That's not It's so, so true. That, it what, happens what out here in Vegas. Yeah, I guess I don't have the best internet sometimes. Um, so where did where did I lift it? Um, you were explaining. Okay, so we all agree with the marketing techniques. We agree with Brendan. We agree with going and looking for things that have been on the market for 60 days. So let's just ease it into what's the education to the buyer? Are you interested? Yeah, Sally Ellis has got it. Are you interested? Are you interested in what? Well, the buyer, right? So how do we educate the buyer? Are you interested in having somebody do additional marketing or even to the selling agent for that? Oh, oh, oh that's where I left off. Yeah, okay. yeah. Got, gotcha. Okay. So if you're interested in learning some marketing techniques, which is what I'm in business to teach my homeowners how to sell their home, now you actually have to be a good marketer it's the the days of an average realtor putting a for sale sign and getting 15 offers on a home those days are gone so those those realtors are going to be gone and good for you for taking the initiative to try to be a good realtor but now you need a good realtor in order to get your home sold in order to get your home sold these are some of the techniques that i use okay I'd like to come over and explain them. I promise you, I will be in and out of your house as quickly as you want me to be, but I will give you extremely good ideas that even if you don't use me, I am okay if you use my ideas. Some of the ideas that you're gonna give to these realtors or to these homeowners are gonna be, hey, you need to do a, a 1% buy down on their interest rate. So that way you need to give them a seller credit of, you know, 18, $20,000. So that way you can offer to pay for the buy down on their rate and then be able to do better than what these two, one buy downs that everybody else is offering. That doesn't make sense. The two, one buy downs don't make sense when you can do a 1% permanent interest rate buy down for the life of the loan or until the day they sell that house. That's way smarter, way, way smarter. And especially because the buyer doesn't have to pay for it. It's getting paid for by the seller. So it's like getting a free loan. And you got to give that idea to the seller of the home. And you're going to get your home's top dollar. And then if you're really smart, you're going to take them around and show them all the homes that are available available for sale in their neighborhood. And you're going to ask them a simple question. What do we need to do in order to sell your home for top dollar? I have some ideas, but I'd like to hear your ideas first, Mr. Seller. Did you go look at all the homes that are available for sale in your neighborhood? You did it? Well, guess what? The buyers are going to. So don't you think you should go do what the buyers are going to do? Can I help you? Can I come over and give you some more marketing ideas? There you go. Yeah. And I don't look, even if it's listed with another agent, like Brendan and I are suggesting, invite them over. Look, I'm not trying to take your client. I'm trying to sell your property for you. I'm looking for the buyer. Is it worth it to you if I sell, help you sell this property? Is it worth an extra couple grand to me if I use the marketing techniques that I'm capable of doing? 
I think if you come from the right place, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, Fred, as long as everybody's on the table. Yeah, you've got to get in these people's heads. And, and yeah, I would always hold, I would hold one back. I would, I'm going to safely say this. I'm going to tell you guys, because you're my group, Facebook Marketplace will get you phone calls, period, period. Facebook Marketplace at the right price for the area. I'm often shot. I'm still getting calls for Facebook marketing ads that I placed literally two years ago or three years ago when I first tested it. People still looking in those price ranges, which were like $1,500 to $2,000, which in Vegas isn't that outrageous. Yeah. It, you got to, um, you got to, and then the other marketing method would be to talk to other real estate agents in your office who have listings that haven't sold in 60 days. Yeah. And the first thing that I do is give them suggestions on taking their sellers around and looking at all the homes that are for, and it, you know, this depends on whether you want to help these people, you know, if they're your friends. Yeah. Or, I'm because of the brokers and people getting touchy feely, I would approach your broker first, right? And let them know that you want to do this or when's the next group meeting. If anybody's having difficulty selling, I got a bunch of techniques that work to get buyers. Would you like me to do some additional marketing? I think, again, because I'm also recording and I'm a state approved educator and I believe in the ethics of real estate, being open and disclosing, especially to your broker up front and playing ball with everybody. I think it's a win-win for everybody. That's just me. Um, but I love the idea of going through Redfin and Zillow and finding Fizbos and creating Facebook pages and just tackling everybody who's over 60 days and dragging down buyers, getting them. Some states do it. California doesn't or does have a buyer's contract at this point, but I would be all about dragging down buyers right now. I would be all about buyers right now. I think sellers are great and the market's going that direction, but I'm just telling you from a pre-foreclosure perspective that they're all projects. They're all projects right now. They're so, all Liam's. They're all, um, they're all projects. They just literally are all projects right now. There. Another, another thing would be if you want buyers is to go sit at open houses or other realtors in your office that are lazy to go do open houses. Go right. be their open house person. You know, that's how you're going to get buyers. That's another good way. I have a buddy who worked at the radio station and that's how he started his, his real estate business. He would always pick my brain. He was answering calls at the radio station. He's closing 30 to 40 homes a, month, a year in Orange County, and that's California. And now the guy is closing 40 to $50 million a year in real estate sales. He got his start by just sitting at open houses. And if you're in the Southern California area, he's such a cool guy. And he's so helpful that he will literally, and I've sent new agents and I said, just go watch how he handles people when they come in that front door. It's so and simple. It's look, even I, with my hard. lack of skill, cause I've done this um, for my friend Donica at her open houses a few years ago. Right. She's like, oh, they're just a bunch of people who look, I go, you're not asking the right question. Why did you come to the open house? Well, I wanted to find out. Well, we should find out for your house, right? It's top of mind. It's always going to be like marketing is always going to be top of mind. I don't care if it's a neighbor asking about the value of a house. That means they want to know what their house is worth. Hey, is it okay if I come by on Wednesday and show you what the value of your house is? And you should be aware of it. And here's the forward progression over the next six months based on the direction of the market. If you have any questions, you should call me. That's it, top of mind. 
top of mind, top of mind, top of mind. Like, I don't know why people don't get into the mental mindset of creating this group, right? This is your crowd. You have this listing. You did this open house. There is nothing more frustrating to me. And I've seen it uh, specifically with a lot of friends who do open houses. Uh, nothing really came through. It was all, all neighbors. They wanted to know the value of their house and they're basing it on the house that you're in. And so instead of you saying, hey, why don't I come by on Tuesday and show you what your house is worth and what it'll be worth over the course of the next year, right? Why wouldn't you do that? Well, they were just looking at the house. I, I have fought this my entire life. This is no different than, you know, the monster marketing technique doesn't work. It doesn't work for you. Works for everybody else. Uh, there are a lot of people who will tell me the monster doesn't work. And there are a lot of people who will tell me the monster works. There are a lot of people who tell me they will do open houses and got a bunch of looky-loos. Looky-loos to me are people who want to know the value of that property. They are a lead source. I don't know why, and I, I hope I've ingrained this on everybody or anybody re-watching this call from a marketing standpoint. Anybody who asks a question is a potential client or a potential referral, Fred, period, period. There's no other words for it. They are either a potential client or a potential referral. And until you get into that mindset, you will always be chasing it and being, I mean, don't hate me for saying it. If you can't wrap your brains around that, you are basically a four transaction a year person. There is a huge reason why the top is the way they are. There's a reason why David is the way he is. There's a reason why Steve Hawks is the way he is. There's a reason why Fred is the way he is. Um, I've got lots of state number ones. I can keep going down the list. But the bottom line, everyone they meet is a potential client or a potential referral, period. And until you get that literally into your brain, then be happy with where you are. And I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just telling you the reality. Everyone is a potential client or referral. I mean, it's not, uh, well, they're my friends. Okay. But they're still a client or referral. Am I wrong, Fred, for thinking this way? No, uh, it has to deal with your own personal comfort level. And... Uh. Ah. I, I mean, look, I, I agree that it's not a bad idea to always approach people and, and do that. I'm not in against it. If but, you did an open house, Fred, how many of them are you trying to meet with and try to show them their value on their actual houses, even if they were neighbors? So, I mean, I would do open houses in my last relationship. I challenged her uh, to get everybody's email address and I told her I would give her a hundred dollars for each one just just to encourage her she got six people came in the open house and she got six hundred dollars she got everyone's email address so if you're motivated to me everybody I want their email because these are potential buyers I can get their email. I can do work with that email. I'd rather not call them and get the negative feedback, but I can provide them with great content on email marketing and put them on a special buyer's email list that I have met in person and say, hey, I don't know if you found anything yet, but here, here's some information for you. Here's some this here's that here's some really good stuff here and if you have any questions give me a call that is if i get a phone call from one of those emails it is almost a done deal every time i agree so that i agree and I'm that's and and that's the mentality look i'm not trying to deter us from our primary purpose which is to help people who've missed payments but I'm just telling you the current batch of people that we're working with that are in pre-foreclosure, they're, they're a bit of a struggle. 
at the moment. All right. And it's going to be that way for a couple of months. Uh, we've got better data, but to be perfectly honest, they are clearing out this pre pandemic number. All right. Let's make you guys some money, right? Like you didn't join me, you know, for one thing, you, you, uh, theoretically, you didn't join multiple coaching groups. I would like to believe that Fred and I and, and Lori, that we can bring you something that will benefit your entire real estate service for God's sakes. I, I realize I sound like a one trick pony. I'm not, I'm going to say it definitively. And I'm recording. I am probably the best marketing mind in real estate. I know every technique that has ever been done at least for four decades. And I have used most of them personally. Okay. And I still continue to try different techniques to see if I can push those techniques. And I am telling you right now, if you can get buyers onto deals that have stagnated, this is just money laying around. This is just, Fred, this is like money sitting on the table. If I can find a 60-day deal that's just sitting on the table and I bring in a buyer because it had too many reductions, it got overlooked by the group, blah, 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 whatever it is. You know, my two and a half, my 2%, my two and a half, my 3% is still a pretty good deal, Fred. It's a pretty good deal. You know, um, it, I think buyers are more valuable than sellers today. I, I know there's a, a lot of realtors that don't like working with buyers. I get it. If you also, and this is another thing, if you look at it like a double-ended deal, I look at buyers as like a double-ended deal because I can get the real estate commission and I can also do the loan for them. So that's like a listing agent double-ending the deal. For me, a buyer is like double-ending the deal. I love working with buyers because I like, I just like the, I, the gratification that I get from handing, not per se, handing them the keys but closing the deal for them. And I get, sometimes I get these wonderful testimonial videos and you just can't get those same quality of testimonial videos from a seller. Hey, he sold my house. Hey, he did a great job. Hey, he overcame a lot of obstacles. Awesome. That's great. But the video testimonial that you get from a buyer is way, way better and here's why it's a life dream what did what did, what are our life dreams i want to get married i want to you know start a business i want to you know have some babies oh i want to buy a house you do oh you want to buy a house oh okay have you uh tried to buy a house in march good luck it was kind of difficult i had a realtor that Wrote 30 offers. It took six months. We finally closed the deal, got them a VA funding fee returned back to them and also got them life term, life long disability for life because I told them how to call up the Veterans Affairs and apply for disability. And I got $18,000 back in their pocket. I'm so sorry, but there's not a better video testimonial than that. And this girl was so But they're nervous. all tied together. I think my point to all this is we're looking at these as independent events when they're, in fact, all the same things. L look at your... St uh, they're all tied together, Fred, right? By getting yeah. these testimonials, by being... Giving good information. I don't... I, I know this about you, Fred. I don't think you're going to treat somebody who walks into an open house who wants to know their value any differently than somebody who wants a listing. You're going to treat them exactly the same, right? You're going to give the same kind of treatment. You're not giving them more than somebody else. And I think that's kind of the real estate code. Oh, they're ready to sell right now. I'm going to try harder. I think you should try hard on everyone and make them your clients. They might not be clients today. They'll be clients tomorrow. If they come to your house, um, let's say for, in Lori's case, Clearly, we will be doing open houses this weekend, right? And people come in. Great. When can I come by and show you what the value of your house is today and over the course of the next year? 
or options of getting that equity out, right? Because we are going into a recession. You will need money. It isn't smart to use your credit cards. These aren't crazy statements. This is being an advocate. This is what we're about. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt about it. Um, so, you know, do open houses. You'll find buyers there. Brendan uh, Rendo, look for 60 days on market list out of your market. I completely agree with that as well. Partner up. If you guys have, and I would say this to everyone in the group, and I'm recording this, everyone that's in the group, if you have questions and you get one of these, ask me, I will tell you how to do it. I'm not going to do it for you. You can hire me if you want to, but I'll tell you how to do it. You go set up a page for it. You go share it in a group, no different than what Brendan or I would do by targeted boosting, right? Buy a Craigslist ad. That's another 35 bucks. So you're about 50 bucks into the marketing on this, right? Make sure it's reposted through, um, there are channels that'll repost it through Zillow and Redfin easily, right? With your picture on it, go ahead, do it. But if you're complaining that you don't have any listings or you don't have any activity, then all right, go tag follow up, do it the correct way and keep your pipeline alive. And I'm just trying to generate money for everyone right now based on what the market's doing. That's what I think all of you are paying me for. I think you guys are paying me to tell you what is the most effective way to get a listing right now. Yes, it's based on ethics and a code and Fred and I represent that. Um, it is something we're proud of. It is the way I want you to all behave. However, I want you guys to be millionaires. I, don't, I know nobody believes this, but I want you guys to make all the money in the world and be happy and make every dollar there is. And when somebody like Brendan, who's doing it, says, go pull a 60-day list in your area and go uh, talk to those agents and go, would it be okay if I tried to market your property and try to find a buyer for it? And if I find the buyer, bring the buyer in, can I get a bonus? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. These people are hurting because they overpriced it. Time to get serious. Let's make some money here. There's nothing wrong with making money. Nobody's paying your bills. Okay. Is that raw, raw, Fred? Um, well, I'm, I'm just looking at it. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, but I'm looking at it. If I'm the listing agent and someone calls me and says that, how would I respond to that? Yeah, sure. Send me an offer. Yeah, sure. Market my property. Yeah, sure. This. Yeah, sure. That. But really what um, what you want to do is I'm going to write an email out because I, yeah. think, I, I think I like I'm, that. I like that. Get I'm it gonna, in writing. I'm going to write an email out and I'm going to use I'm going to. Like, what would I want someone to tell me if I was the listing agent and I'm having problems selling my property? That I'm going to write an email and I'm going to share it with everybody. And I'm going to write one uh, while it's fresh in my mind. It will take me 15 minutes or so. And then um, I'll provide them with some of my specials and things that I and, – and I'll see what I can think up while I'm writing this email. And then you can – send that email to the listing agent and try to help generate some business. And, you know, if you're going to help the listing agent sell his property, I don't think asking for a portion of that real estate commission, in addition to the selling office commission, I don't think that's a, a, a bad thing to do either. So I would, I'm, I'm going to uh, write something up. And um, hopefully I can get it done in 15 or 30 minutes. And I'll share it with everybody and see, and see how they, what they yeah, think. Yeah, I, I don't think this is, a, wait, I would challenge everybody on this call or anybody re-watching this. I think this is a great opportunity. Okay, go on whatever. Go find something that's 60 days old. Do exactly what Lori did. Find an open house for the weekend. Go find somebody in your office that's struggling to sell something and send an email. 
let's all compare notes on Thursday, right? And then let's everybody go have an open house this weekend and go sell a house and make a couple of bucks. I don't think that there's anything wrong with this. I, I think we, and I am more than happy to share all my techniques with you that I've done, right? I, Brendan and I will be the first ones to jump up on the podium. Um, go use the, um, the, the groups on Facebook, go create a page on Facebook, all both free. And lastly, go put it on Facebook marketplace and let them know when your open house is. Let me tell you the number one place where I sell open houses is by going on those groups in those specific areas and going, hey, I got an open house. This is what it's going to cost to live in this place. Come by on Saturday uh, from two to five or whatever it is and find out if it's a great fit for you. I don't care if it's one person or 50 people. That's the person you want to talk to, period. And here's the thing that makes me crazy. If you're going to go that far, or run Craigslist ads, or run Facebook marketing ads, or Instagram, or any ads whatsoever. Ask your clients how they heard about the property. God, Fred, nothing as a marketer makes me crazier than not interviewing people, asking them where they found out about whatever the widget is. How'd you find out about my widget? Oh, I saw it on the internet. Okay, what specifically on the internet? Uh, it was a thing on the marketplace. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's very helpful for me so I can find more people that are interested in the property. Property. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. And now you know to double your market efforts there. I'm not a genius. I follow the math always, constantly. It was a good call, Fred. Anything you'd like to add? Fred has disappeared again. I unmuted myself. No, that's all right. Is there anything uh, you'd like to add? I think it was a great call. I think it's a priority to reach out to realtors who are struggling getting their property sold, okay? There's a lot of good ideas. I'm going to outline some of them in an email, okay? And then I'm also going to give them a couple of, of teasing uh, teasers of how I can help them sell their property. Are they interested in having a conversation about that? If they don't know you, if they don't know you, if you're not comfortable with that, then stick with going on Zillow and Redfin and finding them for sale by owners. But guess what? Everybody's doing that. So you have to have a unique proposition because they're all looking for listings, right? What you really need to be focused on is helping the homeowner with ideas to get their home sold. Because everybody's going to be calling them for their listing. What your email and what your conversation needs to be focused on is ideas to help get their property sold. And we've given those ideas during this last hour and a half of your life. So that's what I would focus on when you're calling the Zillow and Redfin for sell by owners. Because everybody's calling them. They're getting 20 calls a day. I'd like to talk to you in person about some legitimate ideas that are going to help you sell this home faster. And one of them is called buying down the interest rate. Let me tell you about that briefly. And then I'd like to come meet with you in person. Are you okay with that? Are you interested? See what that helps. See if that helps you.